speech. So this is Doug Shields, and he's running for the County Commission District One. One. Yes. He's from Claremont, and so talk about yourself and why you want to be a, on the board. Of so um, I, my career, I started out as a certified public accountant in Atlanta after going to Ohio State and upstate New York connections too. I'm from Syracuse actually, uh, yeah. and so. Uh, so got into public accounting, was going to get into the FBI, that didn't work out. So then I, after three years, I was kind of bored of that, went to work for CIA up in Washington, D.C. My uncle and my brother were up there, and they said, why don't you come up here instead? So I thought I'd run around, you know, the, the, the world with a, you know, be a spy, you know, since, since I couldn't be an FBI guy. <laughs> and like an idiot, I put CPA on my resume, and so they sent me into the inspector general's office, which is who does audit and, you know, oversight assessment. Which actually worked out well because I spent nine years then understanding how the federal government works, which you don't want to know. <laughs> how it doesn't work. And, and I got to travel the world and I got to, you know, audit these billion dollar programs. I finished up actually looking at the satellite program, which was classified at the time. They, 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 they oh, combined really? the Air Force, the Navy, and the CIA satellite program into one. Fascinating stuff. Um, then the Cold War ended, the CIA wasn't so much fun place to work anymore. <laughs> and uh, my dad was a defense contractor up in Syracuse. I had the clearance, went up there, walked in the door. There were 10 engineers. I said, Dad, where's your business plan? He said, we don't have one. Yeah. We're engineers. We, you know, we, we, we solve hard problems for the government. So we're going to need a business plan. So I wrote the company's first business plan, 10 years in existence, 10 employees. Wrote the plan, and then some of the younger guys were saying, hey, we're doing this Internet stuff. This is 1995. Inside networks over at Rome Labs, one of our customers. I said, oh, that's kind of cool. He said, we can do this for commercial businesses. So this was in 1995. And in my business plan, I have written there that Bill Gates, quote, said, this is a diversion. The Internet is a diversion for college kids. So he since caught up, <laughs> right? But, but uh, that, was, uh, that was really interesting. So I uh, wrote the plan, started doing this Internet stuff, did a tech startup in uh, web development and hosting we picked. Instead of, you know, connecting consumers to the Internet, we figured we'd stick with, you know, commercial bigger companies because that's what we we're you know more accustomed to and so started doing that and grew that business and then we wound up uh, getting into the information security space because we're connecting our networks to our customer networks some were billion dollar you know companies and we're worried about their, their stuff being exposed of course we had contracts with NSA so everybody just assumed we knew the security stuff so it was a good opportunity we got into that and uh, so, so that was my that was 15 years of experience, um, and I, 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 I'm thinking of COVID now. I had to manage this this 50 person company through 9/11, and that was uh, that was something else, man. I, I had $500,000 in cash, you know, set aside rainy day money, and uh, it was it was gone by like January, and I'm putting payroll on a credit card and mm -hmm. made it through. We got got through the whole thing, but it was that was tough. So I, I completely understand what everybody's going through right now. My wife's got a little property management business, uh, vacation rentals, and of course her revenues have gone to zero, so she's she's feeling it as well. Um, but you know, it's times we're living in, hopefully we'll get through it. So fast forward, then I uh, kids went to college, sold everything, moved to Florida, kind of retired. So my wife's from here; she went to Winter Park High, and uh, I love to water ski, so it was perfect. And then. Uh, a couple of years later, I'm driving up the yard. There's one of those yellow, you know, zoning signs. Called up, say, "What's going on?" Oh, there were supposed to be six or eight homes on the rest of the lake, and now there's going to be 400. And so, I mobilized the neighborhood and the community, and we learned how all politics works. Thanks to thanks to Sean Parks, he kind of guided me through everything, and we were able to get that one beat back. Um, and I'm sitting here going, the comprehensive plan shows six or eight homes. Why are we approving 400 unless there is a change? It's like a business plan. Unless there's a change, 561 now is four lanes instead of two. No, the, the, the school doesn't have a bunch of, you know, trailers. You know, the nearby one they're all going to walk to. No, it was already full. So anyhow, I... I then I started getting phone calls. There's developments going into the Green Swamp. Can you help us? Um, there's this, there's that going on, and fast forward. And so when Mr. Sullivan was running on a post, I just felt that I, I had to jump in and and, uh, and and throw my hat in the ring. So here I am, 
again, never never thought I would <laughs> be running for politics, but I, I felt like I had to do it. And I agree completely with your, on the schools. Uh, one of my buddies moved into town, and it's one of the first things he looked at was the schools. And he goes, and he would use to scout locations for one of the big manufacturers. First thing he would do, probably second, first thing is probably look at the taxes. The second thing he would do, he was a go and he would look at um, how good are the schools? Because that's an input to his mm -hmm. output. That's right. If you can't get good people, then you're not going to, you know, get a good product. And so he <laughs> said, we really got to, you know, ha have to think about getting these these schools, you know, better. So I'm, I'm completely, you know, full support of that. I'm also a little concerned. Once I started digging into the county finances, the revenues have gone up from, I think it's 240 million to 300 million, and uh, but our rainy day pot of money has gone down. And we're going to need that, you know, especially with COVID and what's going on now. So I, I'd like to take a close look at that um, once I get in there and see if we can't figure out, you know, where that money's going. Um, I also think that that we, we should have a closer look at impact fees. It actually came up on the meeting last night. It was a question. Um, we want it, I think, be fair around the other counties. We lowered them to zero at one point, and so all of the, you know developers came in from the surrounding counties and you know it was kind of a field day they didn't pass the savings on to the you know to the buyers yeah. of the homes they, they kept it yeah. I believe yeah. um, again I'm not expert on that but I think we should look at it because that's where the money comes from to build these schools and, and to you know make the quality of life we, we all want but if you don't do it with the impact fees then eventually you're going to have to do it with property taxes because study after study shows that you cannot, you, you cannot pay for the goods and services that you want, what a community needs, through property taxes. You just can't. So you, so you have to figure out another way to do it. There's sales tax. There's, but impact fees, I think, are a good one. You know, and I, I said last night. So, if, you know, if all of a sudden impact fees go up by ten thousand dollars, well, the value of the house that you own just went up by ten thousand. Well, that's not a too hard a, a sell, I think, to most people. Um, you know, and, and then the other side, we've got an affordable housing issue, and that needs solved. Mm -hmm. So maybe you say, okay, on the this is the affordable housing, and impact fees are zero. But you, 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 Mr. Developer, have to pass that savings on to, to the to the buyer, exactly. right? Yeah. Not not just keep it as margin. I you know, I've run businesses. Mm -hmm. I know how margin <laughs> works. And so, and, and businesses, you know, we respond to incentives. That's that's. That's how it goes. And look at the tax code. You know, there's probably more money spent on figuring out how not to pay taxes than people actually pay. <laughs> so, you know, corporations respond to, 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 to incentives. So I, I agree 100% on, on the schools. Um, and and I, one of the other things I think we're not connecting the dots very well. I'm sorry, I didn't ask how long I had. I'm still uh, yakking. We're no, no, for, for, my, for my opening sp spiel. <laughs> Well, that's all right. When okay. you're done, if there's a so, question, that's so, the only yeah, thing. I don't mean to fail all the time. Just, <laughs> just keep going. I, the other thing I, I think that we're not connecting the dots on is the environment and our businesses. I mean, Claremont, for heaven's sakes, has a sneaker store in downtown Claremont, a, a shoe store with Amazon out there and, you know, all these other giant stores. There's a small little boutique sneaker shop, and these two people running it are making, you know, a, a, a great living and it's attracting other businesses to come in. And it's because we've got the trail that can do triathlons. We've got the lake. It's a beautiful lake. It's not been, you know, <clears throat> happened what happened to Apopka. It's still, you know, pristine. And so these triathletes come in not only from all over the state, but all over the, the country, especially in the wintertime. Where are you going to ride a bike in upstate New York in <laughs> January? You're not. So, so they, they, come, they, they down. come down. Yeah. So it, I, I, I want to make sure that every decision we make at the county level, we're thinking about the impact on the environment, which then downstream is our businesses, right, that, that are being supported by tourism and athletes and, and all those other things. And I understand they just connected the Leesburg trails up to a couple other towns up there, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and people love that. I mean, yeah. my brother in Washington, D.C., he bought his house specifically because it was on the bike trail. I mean, people make financial decisions mm -hmm. based on where can I do my, my recreation. And so, you know, I, I think we need to be mindful of that. And that was one of the reasons I jumped in. 
You know, I've already heard from people saying, well, I can't bike on the roads anymore. I used to be able to 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, okay, so maybe that's gone, and, but, but let's try to, you know, let, let, let's try to, 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 yes, go ahead. I was in Claremont yesterday, and the bikers were back on the roads. So some of them are brave enough to do it. No, that's a good point. Socially distancing. And, and, and like this swarm of bees going by, I'm like, man, you people are brave. And, yeah. And, yeah uh, they trust other people's driving more than I do. There, there were, the guy that was running, right about the time I moved here, he was in charge of their triathlon club or something. He was riding up 27 and he got killed. Ooh, yeah, he was, he was the guy in charge. So, you know, we, we need to... We need to support our businesses, we need to support our citizens, we need to listen, we need to take all these factors into effect when we when we make a decision. And I, I believe that the comprehensive plan was very well written and, and we should use that sort of as our guide going forward. Um, and, and, then, and then again, listen to the citizens. I'm hearing from a lot of people who said, Tim's not listening. And, and so I'm like, well, he wasn't listening to me and that's why I'm running for office. And so I will be listening. You know, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to listen. Whether I'll be able to, you know, make something happen, I'm one fifth, you know, of the group. I, you know, who knows? But I will, I will try. I'll do my best, and and see if I can't, you know, see if we can't make the, the citizens get what they want out of the county. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So one of the big issues here in this county is transportation and the road network, and one of the reasons is that the uh, Cities keep proving rampant development. Claremont is there. I don't know if you follow inside Claremont, but Danny you know, Page that runs <coughs> out there. And, and they have protests, and up here, Tavares keeps approving them, and yet if you go down 19, down over here, when you go home, you're going to see there's almost like a bonsai area there where they have... Uh, traffic backed up at two of the major intersections and the reason the cities will say is while the county, there are either county roads at the intersections or there's the state highway and neither one of them will fund any improvement in the intersections and then you say well okay then why doesn't the city do that or require that the developers who are building hundreds of homes off of these on these county roads connecting to the state connectors why aren't they uh, being required to put in some improvements in the intersections, an extra turn lane and other things like that? And the, and like Tavares have gone through that because I go to their city council meetings um, uh, as well as others. I've covered all 14 cities, by the way, just so. Right. And so, and I'm familiar with people like the city council down in Claremont and so forth. And they, <coughs> the city councils, well, just they don't. They want to spend the money on ten million dollar staff buildings, like Tavares is doing, one after another, and they spend it on things other than the roads. And uh, so, do you uh, have you gotten much feedback? You got any perspective or direction on what you'd like to see? So, great question. And we had a uh, sort of a joint uh, a Zoom meeting. Um, I think it was might have been Impact Lake. Um, but anyhow, the, the city, you know, people were there, and then the, 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 the county people were there, you know, giving their pitch, and um, that very thing came up. And, and so, you know, you see, see fingers going both directions, but everybody said that is a major problem and needs fixed. And, and one of the discussion points that came up was, well, maybe something we could all live with would be, a, a, you know, a, a, a usage you know, tax on gasoline, you know, I don't know, that was just one thing that got There's thrown out. There's still an option that has not been approved for five pennies on a gallon. Got, got thrown out there, um, you know, and then, then that also helps other counties help pay for our stuff when they drive through here. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that it's a big problem, and, and coordination with, uh, with the cities is, is going to be a huge thing going forward because it's got to get fixed. I mean, again, that's one of the reasons I built up my my little community group to 1,200 people so quick, it was because people are going, you know, I used to be able to get to Orlando in X down minutes, and now I have trouble getting out of my subdivision, and it takes me X more. And if it continues at this rate, I'm going to have to move. And I moved out here to get away from the chaos and the mess, but I still want to be able to get to work. 
And so it's a it's a real real concern for people. It really is. It is. And, and and the city's blaming the county. The <coughs> county's blaming the city. That doesn't help anybody. Do you have any clout with DOT? Currently, no. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I can call somebody and say, hey, buddy, so we might be able to make something happen. Yeah, because we, in, in Eustace, 19 heading north, has this terrible curve. And a friend of mine lives on that curve, and her house, they come up into her yard twice and hit her, actually hit the corner Jeez. of her house once. Because they now they've got all these little signs along, slow down. Slow, it's not working, no. and there was a meeting. I was in Israel at the time, so I missed the, the DOT meeting. And what they want to do is narrow that two-lane road down to one lane. And you know what's going to happen? Grove, Eustace, Bay. Grove is one way this way. Um, Bay is one way heading south. And my street, where I live, is going to be in between. And they're going to cut through there. You know they are. Yeah. I have no sidewalks. The kids, the people riding bicycle kids, we've got more kids in our neighborhood than we used to have because it's, you know, not it's yeah. a lower income yeah. neighborhood. I've been there 20 some years and I don't plan to move. Good. So I think it's crazy what what they're going to do and I don't know how to. Sue is the former mayor used to Great, right. good, good, good. So, so what district are you in? Four. Four, and, and that's. Uh... Or is, um, is that Mount Dora used us to bear? No, the supervisor. Oh, oh she's so asking about the commissioner. The oh. Commissioner in four. She had that memorized. Leslie? Leslie. 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 Oh, yeah, Leslie Campione. Yeah, Campione. yeah so, so she'd be the first one to talk to and, mm -hmm. and see. And she's the chair, so she's, she's in the power seat right now. I know. <laughs> if you can get, because that's where I'm hearing from the you know a lot of the Four Corners people. They're, they're having a transportation issue. They've got kids. There are a lot of a lot of middle income homes down there. They're nice neighborhoods, yeah. but they're not luxury. Right. And so they usually have one car. I'm told. Well, the kids have to get way up back up to North Claremont, up 27 to get back to after school events. Well, you know, bomber dad has the car. So how are they going to get? There used to be a Lynx bus service. That's gone. Yeah. And, and they also have to get back up to 27 to 50 to work. That's where most of the jobs are. Yeah. And so that's one of their their big issues is is down there is transportation. And yeah. so, um, but that's, yeah, that's actually District 1, so Sean's been trying to hand it over to Tim, and yeah. it's not well, been going very well. So that, that's my I, point. You know, but can, you can talk to any commissioner, you just yeah, got to... Well, I've tried to talk to okay. us, the city manager in Eustace, yeah. and he didn't seem to... Oh, was it inside city limits? Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so it's that inside would, the city right, limits. Right, right, so that's but really a city issue. But why would a U.S. highway want to go down to one lane? That's I mean, crazy. That and it, it gets worse than that because, you know, people drive with a... I was driving on, it was actually, this is in Polk County, but uh, Ronald Reagan, I was doing rounds for my wife's property management business. Yeah, I know Ronald Reagan. Yeah, so on Ronald Reagan, and then it turns into Dean Still, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, there's all these cars coming this way. I'm like, what in the heck? This is, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and there's line after line of cars, these huge backup <laughs> at, at 27 and Dean Still. And so I pull up my, my phone, and it, it's, it's four is stuffed. So everybody's software is telling them to go this way, and yeah. that's what's oh, going to happen to your street. Mm -hmm. Your software says, oh, no, it's backed up this way, so mm -hmm. go this way. And, and it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. People are really dealing with, with you know, Waze and, and Google Maps and yeah. all the rest of them, and, and there's cars in places they didn't used to be. Exactly. As we have these new choke points and people figure out a way around. So I, th you're, in a, you're in a pickle. You're gonna have, we're going to have to get that fixed. I don't like I wish I had an answer for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no problem. I, I just got to talk to each one of the commissioners and see what we can do. Yeah, there's a solution in there somewhere. Stop I mean, lines at every. They were gonna. They were gonna shut down 33 for like four months. 561 dumps out into three, 33, and then heads down to four, and and truck, trucks, 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 crazy. You know, amount of trucks on that road. It's a little two lane old country road, but they're gonna shut it down because there's a bridge they needed to replace. And you started seeing signs all over the place in, in Groveland and, and, and Mascot and Claremont, you know, stop the blah blah blah. I don't know who, who was responsible for it. I wasn't really involved. Not me. But they but they <laughs> but they but they wound up making they, they pulled back on that decision and instead they put in a temporary bridge, you know, like the military you would use with the grates. Yeah. Okay. One line, a street light either side. It's great traffic. You know, otherwise, all that traffic was going to have to go up 27, and it was a huge detour 
I mean, that, that's an economic hit for anybody that, that's, you know, moving mm -hmm. goods and services. Mm -hmm. you got to pay those drivers and, and you got delays and everything else. So they, they came up with, I think, a good solution. I don't know what it cost, you know, and, and, and how it got paid for. I wasn't privy to any of that stuff. But yeah. my point is there are solutions there. Yeah, well, i got to get a hold of DOT, too. <clears throat> Straighten out the curve. Yeah. Buying up some property would make a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's just a you know it's a funding issue, or, or or somebody just hasn't you know completely thought through it. I'm getting I'm getting hammered right now by the the um, the, the people that are are, are, are uh, supporting the, the pet shelter that, that we built. The no kill pet, no -kill pet, pet, shelter. pet shelter, and it came up in you know one of the things. Well, what do you think about? And I said, well, my first. My inclination as a business owner, and when I teach entrepreneurship, I forgot to mention that, I, so I, I taught entrepreneurship to our U.S. military for three years. So if you're getting ready to leave, come on in. I'll take a pause. Come on in. Come on in. Can we help you? I'll all our donations. Are you, are, you, <laughs> are you Regina? Excuse me? Are you Regina? Did I just talk to you on the phone? No. Now? Okay. No, I actually you're welcome anyway. It, but I can't. I, I changed wallets and I can't find my, my card. I left it in my other wallet. But I was just coming in to see if you had any Trump signs or anything. Oh, yes. How many do you <clears> want? How many do you want? Um, can I get two? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I put them all over there, Diane, because they would have been behind you. Okay. Let me ask another question. Uh, since you got background, I was a certified internal auditor for oh, okay. years, yeah, yeah. corporate and business, so, uh, and government auditing. Uh, and so I'm a budget. Um, that's part of my mantra is budget. Good. And one of the things is I don't know if you've had enough exposure to, well, the federal government, you probably did, but that here, uh, one of the things that leaps out to anybody. Thank you. Thank you. One of the problems that leaps out to anybody that's um, got business experience is that government does not produce or even make visible metrics on their performance. They only do fund accounting, uh, and they well, federal government has KPIs and some things like that, but. The local cities and the counties, they don't produce as part of their budget package performance metrics. Uh, you know, cost per uh, employee on building roads or sure, cost yeah, yeah. per resident for building roads. Yeah. Nor do they compare it to other entities like other counties. Yeah. There is a, a group called the Florida Benchmark Consortium that does do that with cities and some counties that pay them dues and then they produce a report where they compare metrics. Uh, they're on Claremont, Mount Dora, and Tavares are in that program, but they will not publish it and you can't get a copy without paying like $500 to get it from the central wow. group that does it. Okay. And the county here under Jeff Cole did that, got into that for one year because it cost like $3,000. And then he then dropped it. He has never produced decent metrics of any kind. Okay. And you don't see that for the constitutional officers. It's impossible to even get them to publish their detailed budgets. So then the question is, with business background, do you foresee that maybe one of the things, and that's what I'm encouraging, <coughs> is to, man, to, in, to try and make the government managers responsible by publishing in their public budgets performance metrics for the work. And in the case of that animal shelter you talked about, it could be, you know, cost per animal held and, and, and processed and everything else and then compare it to other entities and see if there's efficiencies that can be had. But without that, all it is is, well, this department got three million dollars, schools, same thing. Yeah. They they uh, they don't manage metrics either. Um, yeah. They just are under such cost pressure that I've given up trying to push them because yeah. they have so little money that yeah. you know they will cut and slash just because they don't have the money to sure. fund it. Sure. But the cities, so well, let's just you know annex some more land and yeah. let's increase the property taxes and the millage rates and. Uh, and it just goes on and on. And so, any perspective you have. Yeah, it's great that. stuff. So, 
before I get inter interrupted, I'll, I'll swing back to, to, to answer your question. Okay. What I was what I started to say was when I, I was teaching entrepreneurship to if you were separating out from the U.S. military, you had to take a class either resume writing or, or, or starting your own company or you know like one other thing. So I got selected by Syracuse University to go teach that worldwide. Did that for three years, and one of the things that I would always teach the, the, these uh, these soon-to-be veterans was lower your costs, lower your 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 run rate. You know, save your cash. Right? Why buy a restaurant when you can buy a food truck? Why buy a food truck when you can rent a food truck? And we get them sort of the thing through because they're you know they're optimistic and I'm going to start a business. It's going to be great. It's like you, you do not know what you do not know, <laughs> and and so and, and, and bad things happen. COVID, you know, so so so, and I tell my war stories of you know what happened to me when I was running a business, and it, it seemed to help a lot. Um, but but, so when the question on the animal shelter came up, I said, well, my first inclination is, can we outsource this? Is this something that we need to take on ourselves? Is is there somebody else that's doing? You know, animal shelters doing it right, doing it well, and again, metrics are, 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 are a great. It's a great idea because do we want to take that on? There's some things the government has to do. The U.S. You've got to have a military. There's some things you, you don't have to do, mm -hmm. right? And, and push down to the states, which is great. Uh, push you know, keep push down to local as, as much as you can. I think that's wonderful. Um, so, so the animal shelter to me was one of those things that I would want to do the research on what are other counties doing, what are the metrics, what makes sense, you know, because my daughter-in-law, she actually works at one in Tampa, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, she knew about this one up here. Yeah. And, was and the Humane Society want to take it on? See, and there's part of the things. So, and, and the other issue, apparently, if you do no kill, then that limits the animals you're going to take in. Because if there's an animal that's dangerous, it needs to yeah. put down, you can't take that animal. Uh, Again, this is what I'm told. Yeah. I'm not an expert, yeah, right? I and, I, and I would have to learn about all this stuff and get expert. And that's how I do my decision making. Surround myself with people smarter than me and, 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 mm -hmm. and make, make a decision. So, to, to your point, I'm surprised some of that already isn't in place. Years ago, one of my buddies from high school, he was running the, uh, he, he's up in the New York State DOT. So now you get to give your speech. Right. So um, appreciate the, the invite. Thanks for having me here. I've been oh, talking sure. so long. I don't, I'm not sure if there's anything we haven't covered yet. Um, but uh, but, but I, I, I'm really interested in trying to get into the commission, uh, bring in my, my, uh, my financial background, my business background, my government background, um, coming out of retirement, you know, to, to, to see if I can uh, affect change. I, I never, you know, thought I would get into politics, but, you know, I was raised, I'm an Eagle Scout, my boys are Eagle Scout, my dad's an Eagle Scout, and I was raised that if there's a problem, you go fix it. And I, I, I'm just unhappy with the, the decision making that's being made and, uh, you know, a lot of the issues we've already talked about, and so I um, threw my hat in the ring to try and go fix it. And so that's what I'm going to do, and I appreciate it if I can get your support. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Doug Shields. District. District what? County Commission. County Commissioner. Okay. Very good. Thanks. We did not get